Hey guys, hello everyone. Welcome to Rasayan Academy once again. So in this particular video, which is going to be a very short video, we are going to discuss asymmetric dihydroxylation. So for all those who have already studied a simple dihydroxylation reaction by osmium tetraoxide, I have already posted this in a previous video. Okay, so we are just doing a continuation of that and we will see that what can we add to the osmium tetraoxide uh, reagent such that we can create chiral diols okay that is when you are having a diol formation from an alkene see there are two possibilities because the alkene is planar so the diol can attach from above or from below that will give rise to two different uh, enantiomers if the groups over here are in r dash if they are not the same that is going to give you two uh, different enantiomers even if it is a cis diol okay Try drawing it by yourself and then check uh, whether I'm saying correct or not. So we move onwards and we talk about how can we get selectively one single enantiomer by doing the asymmetric dihydroxylation. So as you can see over here, there are two very big ligands over here that we are using. So these are some chiral amines. These chiral amine ligands provide the required rate enhancement and asymmetric induction. So two benefits, rate enhancement and asymmetric induction by coordinating to the osmium atom. Okay, so these are coordinating to the osmium atom and hence they are doing chiral induction, asymmetric induction. Okay, second important point, the most popular ligands are based on naturally occurring synchona alkaloids dihydroquinine dhq now it is always important that whenever we want to carry out a symmetric uh, synthesis any kind of reaction we should always take a molecule from the nature's chiral pool that is um, uh, nature has a lot of chiral molecules so if we can uh, you know extract any of the molecule from the nature itself it's going to be cheap and recyclable and less uh, you know less harmful byproducts are going to be uh, obtained so it's the best method and that's why we have dhq and dihydroquinidine uh, dhqd so these are two different ligands i will show you the ligand separately all right which actually look like enantiomers but they are not okay let's see them firstly we will also see that why Potassium ferricyanide is used. It is used as a co-oxidant along with our osmium reagent. Okay. And we also have an additive name known as methane sulfonamide, MeSO2 NH2. This is methane sulfonamide that also enhances the rate of the reaction. So we simply have an amide like this. Okay. And what is methane sulfonamide? This just replace the uh, carbon with a sulfur and one more double bond O. That's your sulfonamide. So that's doing the enhancement of the reaction. Now, before we understand these big chiral agents, first let's understand, let's break it down into two different parts. You have DHQ and DHQD. What are these? The DHQ and the DHQD, these are amines. And these are chiral amines you see dhq has this structure and dhqd has this structure so stop the video and try to see whether they are enantiomers or not whether they are enantiomers or not you will see that they are not enantiomers because half of the molecule is mirror image like let's say uh, this part of the molecule this lower part is the mirror image that is fine but the upper part where you are actually having this amine, this is not becoming the mirror image because of this particular carbon. If this carbon was on the other side, then it would be enantiomers. But these are not quite enantiomers, but they are still giving you two different diols that also enantiomerically, enantiomerically pure. If not pure, at least in a very high enantiomeric excess. Okay. I just hope that you know what is enantiomeric excess. If not, then please uh, check out my video on stereochemistry. You will know. So, yes, right. These are two different amines which when combined with a thalazine-based ligand. So, this is a thalazine-based ligand. 
to which the dhq d and the dhq will combine to give you these two complexes dhq d hold twice fal dhq hold twice fal now what is this thalazine based ligands now here we come to this molecule you don't have to remember the structure you only have to remember the name that is we have a dhq hold twice fal and dhq d fal okay and we are going to remember them as alpha ad mix and as beta ad mix what is ad alpha asymmetric dihydroxylation mix and beta asymmetric dihydroxylation mix okay and they are going to give you addition to alkene on the alpha and the beta phase we will also talk about that let's move onwards so yeah let's uh, just first come on to this slide with the largest you have to arrange the alkene in such a way in a uh, let's say in a uh, proper conformation so that we can do the asymmetric uh, synthesis easily let's say we have a shortcut for doing that now with the largest alkene substituent in the lower left corner most important thing jo largest group hai usko hum rakhenge lower left corner pe triple l just remember it triple l lower left corner what is the lower left corner let's say ye hamara alkene hai and this is the largest group so it is on the left hand side and the lower side so we will keep it on the lower left corner aur fir hum add karenge we will add the dhqd based ligand that is your alpha ad mix this is the alpha ad mix right then we are going to add the osmium tetra oxide from below the plane so the alpha ad mix or the dhq ligand will give you addition from below the plane and the beta ad mix or the dhqd based ligand that's the beta uh, ad mix that will give you addition from above the plane so this is all that you have to do you have to first take your alkene in such a way that the largest group is written on the left bottom your lower left corner okay so let's try this out on examples now here you see guys the first one here you see now this is an alkene and uh, both the sides of the alkene are same so theek hai we will just check whether we have the largest group on the left bottom so this group and this group is the same either you keep it over keep this one over here on the left or this also it's the same thing isko rotate karke likhoge to bhi same hi aayega so fine this is the largest on the left bottom because there is hydrogen on the top so this is good now we have to identify the reagent we have k2oso4.2h2o now this is nothing but the uh, oxidizing agent and this is our dhqd hold twice fal this is our beta ad mix this is how you have to identify where is it going to do dihydroxylation above the plane so the diol forms above and it is 97% enantiomeric excess what other reagents are present a little bit of basic condition then uh, a cooxidant and then the rate enhancer okay to itni sari cheeze yaad nahi rakhni hai you just have to identify and move onward next is you look over here we are having another group this is a uh, ch2 and this is coet now what do we have we have dhq hold twice fal so again we have the same reagent but here we have the alpha ad mix and that's why we are going to get 99 96% enantiomeric excess diol formed below okay this is very very important let's move onwards to another example so let's say here we have trans still bean so the trans still bean is again going to have one ph over here and another over here if you write it like this or if you just rotate the ph is going to be still on the left bottom corner okay so yeah this is it we have exactly the molecule written in the perfect way so we'll just identify the reagents here we have dhqd hold twice fal that is our beta ad mix so this is going to give you the diol from above the plane okay and the next is <clears throat> dhq 
DHQ whole twice fal that is the alpha AD mix that's going to give you the diol formation from below the plane. That's it. This is the asymmetric dihydroxylation simplified. Now, there was a question in June 2016, which I'm sharing with you for the CSI net paper. Now, the major product formed in the following reaction is, so you see that there is a pH group, then there is a ester group. Definitely, the carbon-based uh, group is going to be given more priority. There are more number of carbons over here. So, what do we do, guys? We have to check what is the reagent. It is our DHQ whole twice pal. That's the alpha AD mix. Okay, rest everything else is the same. But we have to, don't just directly do this mistake ki humne directly below the plane karwa diya hai. No. We have to write the molecule in such a way that the largest group should be on the lower left corner. So this is how you write it. Then you do the dihydroxyl uh, dihydroxylation that is below the plane okay that is the oh will be below over here and this oh is also below and then you rotate it back to how it is given in the options because in the options this is the zigzag line that it is shown so now when you rotate it is going to become oh above okay so your correct answer is option number four you might be confused about one in four but one is wrong because first you rotate the molecule in this way so that the largest group is on the left bottom. Then you are going to do the uh, uh, dihydroxylation from below the plane and then you are going to rotate it back so that it is uh, matching the molecule given in the option. This is your correct answer. All right. So it is not difficult. It is just a little confusing. You just have to take care of this. And alpha uh, asymmetric dihydroxylation is completed here. It's very simple. If you know, if you want to know more about their structures, then you can actually uh, just try to compare their structures and see that what are the different uh, centers, how many chiral centers are present, so on and so forth. Okay. So yes, guys, I will see you all in another such video. This is it. बहुत छोटा सा वीडियो था ये, बहुत छोटे से टॉपिक पे. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a nice day.